What is the Curiosity Rover? Well, it's a giant six-wheeled off-road robot uh, that we put on Mars in order to figure out if Mars ever was a habitable planet. Mars is a, a really harsh environment. For one thing, temperatures on Mars can vary more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit between day and night. Mars has a radiation environment that affects the spacecraft, causing little spurious electronic signals throughout the rover. So Mars is a, is a foreign environment. The rover has been designed, of course, to withstand all that. Curiosity is an incredible vehicle. She's seven feet tall. Uh, her eyes are, you know, off the ground, about the height of uh, the tallest basketball players. And she can look around and see stereo vision, uh, take HD color pictures and send those to Earth, and then we can visualize them on Earth here in 3D. She can drive herself around, avoid obstacles, figure out how far she's traveled, uh, but then we analyze the data to pick out scientifically interesting targets. Once we do that, she can deploy her seven-foot robotic arm. Uh, this arm has a turret of instruments at the end of it, including a big jackhammer drill. This is something that uh, humans couldn't operate as delicately and beautifully as Curiosity does. You know, one of our, my colleagues compared it to holding out a lawnmower, you know, out in front of you and placing it within a millimeter of a rock. With the same arm that jackhammers into something as, you know, solid as a sidewalk, we can also place a delicate microscope up against a rock a few millimeters from the surface. And then, of course, we have the ability to deliver that sample into these instruments inside the rover and analyze them. So it's, it's a pretty fantastic vehicle. So one of the more uh, interesting instruments that we have on the rover is uh, called a laser-induced breakdown spectrometer. And the fun part of that is the word laser. So we shoot a laser uh, from a telescope that's mounted on the top of the rover's mast. Uh, that laser is focused on a, a rock or soil target up to seven meters away from the rover. And we create little sparks on the rock or soil uh, by shooting the laser. And the color of those sparks tells us uh, what the chemical composition of the rock or soil is. Uh, so in addition to our cameras, this laser system shooting interesting targets around us and figuring out remotely what they're made out of will help us zero in on the right targets for our arm uh, and for our drill. So Curiosity definitely gets a lot of uh, beauty sleep. We have to uh, charge up our batteries every night. But then, you know, once she gets going, uh, the first thing she does is listen for commands that we send from Earth. So we use our high gain antenna. This is that steerable lollipop antenna that's on the rover deck. That's pointed to Earth and we uplink our set of commands for the day. Curiosity executes them for the next five or six hours. At the end of that time period, uh, Curiosity will communicate with uh, Odyssey or Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, and beam down the data that corresponds to what it did during the day. Then we spend the next you know, 12 or 16 hours analyzing that data, uh, preparing the next set of commands, and then uplinking them to Mars just as the sun is rising and Curiosity's pointing her high gain antenna back at Earth for the next day's set of commands. So every day we get uh, tens or even 100 uh, megabytes of data from Mars, which is pretty amazing. Mars can be 100 plus million miles from Earth, and the data can take more than 15 or 20 minutes by the speed of light, you know, to go from Mars to Earth. Couldn't imagine doing that a few decades ago. I think our greatest hope for Curiosity is to really say something definitive about the early environment of Mars. And uh, whether we can definitively say that life was ever there, we may not know that with this mission, but we'll sure know how Earth-like Mars was.